today on Successful Living. If you just looking cute is what's important to you, then you'll have a whole lot of stuff that makes you look cute at the expense of debt. If you just caring what people see you riding, if that is what is a top priority to you, whether you can afford it or not, debt unfortunately is like a cancer it will try to eat up everything around it and it is no respecter of persons because you can make a little bit of money and be in debt or you can have multi millions and even billions and be in crazy debt the principle is the same so can I give you just a few principles that will help you if you grab them so that you can indeed be like Joseph and be a good steward and never, ever, ever have this demon of debt haunting your future. First of all, seven points. Seven is the number of completion. Stop going into debt immediately. Somebody talk to me, say immediately. Stop buying stuff on credit immediately. Secondly, any, when you covenant with God to become a good financial steward, then you have to secondly agree that if God sends any additional income, if you go sing someplace and God sends some extra money, if you do something nice for somebody and they just sow a seed into you, or whether you did anything, if they just sow a seed into you, say, the Lord told me to bless you, recognize that that's so that you can become free from the bondage of debts because when you are free, you are able then to do whatever God directs you to do. So he wants you to recognize it. Don't take lightly. The whole, the whole point of the $2.74 illustration is so you won't take lightly whatever God sends into your hands. That you will recognize that it can little becomes much when you put it in the master's hands. So secondly, when God sends extra income, apply it to debt retirement. Now let me just clarify something before I move to the third point. There is something called good debt and there's something called bad debt. I believe that if you're investing in your future and you had to get a few loans, I know it's crazy, but I believe that will serve you well. And I hope that there's a way that for your planning purposes, if you're a parent or a grandparent, that you can learn strategically how to plan for that. In other words, Dr. Michelle and I already make investments for houses that will pay for Jade and Jaleel's college education. Are y'all hearing me? We have had them in private school from the day they could go to school and were calculating the other day. Ain't no grants, ain't none of that. $300,000. And they're only in the sixth and fourth grade. 300 cold cash dollars have we put into their education. So we're going to make sure that we buy, we're buying property that will take care of whatever else needs to go so that where they want to go to college is of no issue. Do y'all hear what I'm saying? That's not just us. You can do the same thing. And even if you don't have children, do it so that there is an accumulation that will take place. So for whatever God wants to get done through you, he can do it. Thirdly, you got to sell anything that has you in bondage. Did y'all hear how quiet it got? Did y'all hear how quiet it got? Glory to God. I'm gonna pause right now because our special guests have entered into this good success. Come right up front, come right up front. 
This is Pastor and Lady Matthews. Come right in. That's right. Take those seat right there of honor, mother. Amen. This is this is the pastor, lifelong pastor of Elder William Frank House the Third. Bless you all. So glad to have you. They're gonna bless us at ten o'clock. Amen. Pastor, come take this seat of honor right here. Amen. Glory to God. So right there. Yes, sir. Amen. Y'all give them a good, good success welcome. Amen. 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 And so let me just let me just give you these last couple of points. You you've got to be willing. You've got to be willing if you're gonna get the benefits of your good stewardship. You got to be willing to let stuff go. Listen, if it's in your hand and you're not willing to let it go, what can God put in your hand if you're not willing to let go what you have if he wants to bring something different to you? And I want to tell you, by the way, that just does not apply to financial stewardship, but some of you hold on to relationships that you need to let go so God can bring the real thing. Some of you hold on to old customs and habits that you need to let go so God can do a new thing. You need to let go of old mindsets so that it can be transformed by the renewing of your mind and God can bring a new mind and what a new mind will come a new reality for your destiny. So you've got to be willing to let go. So if you've got to sell some assets, let them go and get yourself out of any kind of bondage. Fourthly, you've got to look at the reality that there are things that you would normally pay for that you've got to be willing to do for yourself. I know you've got some habits that you just do all the time. And ladies, when I talk about this, Lord have mercy, it's like I have stepped on a time bomb when I say maybe you don't have to get your nails done every week. Or maybe you don't have to, maybe you can get a girlfriend to do your hair. Oh, you look at me like I have just absolutely said a four-letter word. I don't know what it is, but I do know that if you are going to walk in the role of, 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 of Joseph and be a good steward in no matter what situation you are, you're going to have to be careful in how you use what God has entrusted into your hands and use it for his glory. And if it means that certain things have to stop for a while in order for you to get where you can be free and not be under stress, I love the fact that what I love experiencing is stress-free abundance. Hallelujah. I don't want it to be worried up and stressed out and all of that about whatever it is stress-free abundance and when you get dead off of you stress gets off of you so why would you seek to hold on to something that's creating stress for you when you let it go and then watch God move in that situation fifthly one of the great areas, if you're going to get your financial house in order, Pastor, we've been in a two-month process of financial stewardship and we're closing it out now. You're going to have to, fifthly, look at how you're spending money on food. I bet you if you tracked for two weeks how much money you spend on food, everything, it would shock you how much you spend just out of habit and routine that if you changed it around, it would change your financial future. What was that was that revelatory what I told you about that two dollars and seventy four cents? Do I have anybody here that ever thought that over the average working lifetime that's what you could accumulate with just two dollars and seventy four cents a day? Our people perish because of lack of knowledge. With success, you will not perish because of lack of knowledge. You will perish if you don't do what the word teaches you. But you will not be lacking in knowledge. The issue becomes will you be a good steward over it. So look at what it is that you're spending. A latte here. A Starbucks as a treat there. Even take the lower class one, one of them good old honey buns from 7-Eleven and the coffee deal. There's your 274, which is really your $767,000 at an average rate of return. 
and let alone your 22 million at a high rate of return. I want you to think about the next time you spend $2.74 on anything that plus that you really don't need. Review your food costs. Look at what you spend from the time you wake up to the money you put in the vending machine, let alone to eating out all the time. Listen, I'm not trying to help you to have a bad lifestyle. I want you to have a good lifestyle. I enjoy a wonderful lifestyle. I want you to enjoy a wonderful lifestyle. But if you are in bondage and in debt and always under that stress, it will not be what God would have you to be. So there is, I think I was saying, and I need to say it, good debt and bad debt. Good debt. Chris, I'm proud of you. Just graduating from college, man. I'm so excited for you. Jana graduating a few years ago. Many of you all are pursuing it. Uh, a, a, a additional a, educational. And I'm, I'm glad you had to go into a little debt. But it's going to pay off for you. But here's the bad debt. The bad debt is consumer debt. The bad, the bad debt is debt that you just chop for stuff that you really don't need. But you just want it. And God said he'd give you the desires of your heart, but don't twist what he's saying. He wants your desires to be in alignment with him. And so one of the things I've taught you through this series is that every spending decision is a God decision because God owns it all. And you know the reality is that sometimes we just move God off the throne and we get what we want. I worked hard where well, you wouldn't have had the job and you wouldn't have ability if God did not give you that we, we have got to realize that not only is every spending decision a spiritual decision but every giving decision is a spiritual decision so you got to learn that you got to look at what you're spending money on and if you look at how much you spend just frivolously on food you will see that that is a place where you can reduce your cost effectively you know what I discovered? You know, uh, y'all know me. You know I love to eat. That is my absolute bad habit. Amen. Not a smoker, not a drinker, but I love fine dining. That's my bad habit. And it shows up on me. I keep on trying to work on it. I'm telling you, you could pay your mortgage sometime with what I spend on eating out. I even, listen, here's the point. Whether you can afford it or not, you still need to check yourself. Because stewardship doesn't mean I just have the money to do it. It means, am I making a God decision? Or am I just doing what I want to do, which really is indulging in the lust of the flesh? It ain't just sex that's indulging in the flesh. So you got to look at that closely and make sure you are. Here's other benefit I realized. It is a wonderful thing when my wife and I and our two kids sit around the table and have a wonderful home-cooked meal that she used those anointed hands to fix. And I haven't been to any restaurant that can compete with what she makes. Are y'all hearing what I'm saying? And let alone what it does just in terms of the fellowship and having the chance Oh, yeah, you can talk around out in the restaurant and all of that kind of thing. It's just a joy. I want to encourage you, fifthly, to examine your cost for food closely. This is one of the seven ways that you can absolutely help yourself get out of debt. And if you don't face it, you will not fix it. Last two points. you got to have a strategy because what I want you to ultimately understand as this debt is not just debt, it's spiritual warfare. It's seeking to keep you in a place of bondage where you cannot do all God wants you to do or you feel like you can't do what he wants you to do because you feel like you are in a modern day kind of slavery because I don't know what I'm going to do. This is why I keep trying to tell you, you've got to operate from the supernatural and not just in the natural. It's no way you're going to please God in any area of your life and even in the financial empowerment that he wants to bring if you're not going to walk by faith. 
You can accumulate money on your own, but if you don't handle it God's way, it still will not bring the joy of what God intended for you to have when he uses you like he used Joseph. That's why Joseph could keep a good countenance because he knew what he was doing was as unto the Lord. And even when he was falsely accused, he knew that our God is a God that will vindicate. And so it is, brothers and sisters, that me may have made challenges and done things in the wrong place, but now you just must develop a strategy. There's nothing you can do about the past except learn from it. But now, sixthly, develop some goals and develop a strategy on how you're going to get out of this bondage so that you can go forward and be free. I want to ask you all to do me a favor right now before I close with this last point. Would you just close your eyes for a moment? Would you just imagine yourself being absolutely debt free? Glory. Can you get that vision? No consumer debt. If you have this problem, no creditors calling you. If you have this problem, no more worrying, no more robbing Peter the pay Paul. No more anxiety, no more staying up at night, no more anxiousness about these matters. Come on back with me. I hate to bring you back from heaven, but come on with me. Listen, God doesn't give us visions to frustrate us, but faith without works is dead. You got to have a vision and you got to start wherever you are towards that goal. And you got to change things in order to have a different result. So I could go on and give you multiple strategies for how to close this demonic detour trap of debt. But let me just tell you one. If you got a list of four or five credit cards, you attack the lowest one first. If you got one that's got $600, $700 on it, you attack it. You make that extra payment. When extra money comes in, you pay that off. And then when you pay that off, let's say the next one is $1,000. You put the payment you were making on the $600, $700 one and the payment that you're making on the $1,000 one and just go right up the ladder getting rid of those debilitating debts because they affect more than just your pocket. They affect your psyche. And we've got to break the poverty mindset in order to walk into the John 10, 10 mindset, the abundant lifestyle. Jesus said, I came that you might have life and life more abundantly. And the precursor to that is how you're thinking. And the precursor to that is what John said. I want you to be prosperous in good health even as your soul is prospering. So the way your soul is prospering is a precursor to everything else in your life. If you're growing spiritually, you'll take authority over this demon of debt. You won't let the pride of life cause you to stay in bondage. Listen, I'm going to close and give you this last point. But I'm telling you whatever your priority is, it's going to show up in your finances. If you just looking cute is what's important to you, then you'll have a whole lot of stuff that makes you look cute at the expense of debt. If you just caring what people see you ride in, if that is what is a top priority to you, whether you can afford it or not, then that will be the trick that the enemy uses which is really sowing to pride I've said it before I'll say it again you don't know whether I rode in here with the Bentley in my garage or whether I rode in here with my old what I love my old uh, struggle buggy you don't know whether I came in here in the Lincoln or you don't know what I came in here you know I came in here and when I show up that's who's here not the car that's who's here 
Are y'all hearing me? And I'm telling you, it's a good thing to not be struggling with no car payments and struggling with this and struggling with that. And I'm excited. I'm excited about our future. I'm excited about your future. Because here's what I know, and I'm going to close with that last point. Here's what I know. I can, you can, do all things through Christ who strengthens us. So we can break this bondage and enjoy the benefits of being a good steward. Here's the seventh point, and I bid you good morning. When you get on this road and say, I'm going to turn things around and change things, you need to make this a matter for the family. Because one generation is to teach another generation. And so whenever we are fasting or whenever we are doing something related to stewardship, very often what that means is that I have to tell my children that we're going to not do what they're used to doing. See, because I like to dine out, my son likes to dine out. And he doesn't want to go to McDonald's, believe me. He, he's, got, he's got Bentley taste. This morning, I'm getting ready to get in the other car. He jumps in the Bentley, acting like he's driving. The boy, get out the car. We're taking this car. Beloved, hear me when I tell you. If you don't teach your children, they will be lured and secured by the ways of this world. And it is not a function of how little you have or how much you have. The world is seeking to cause them to do things their way and not the kingdom way. So you got to make this a matter of teaching your children God's way from early on so that they will escape this demonic trap of debt. You got to make a decision. It ends with my generation. Pastor Matthews, there's the loss idea, Lady Matthews, of doing something not for yourself but for the next generation. My parents struggled to buy their first house and then their second house. But they didn't just do it for themselves. They paid it off and then sold one of them into me, sold the other one into my sisters because they wanted the next generation to have a running start to go forward. People of God, if you leave a legacy of just debt, that will be an incomplete stewardship of the totality of your life. You may leave a legacy that you were a good person, that you served the Lord well, but you cannot have a complete stewardship legacy unless you take care of the second most talked about subject in all of the Bible, and that is the resources that he entrusts into our hands. And so, young adults again, this fifth Sunday being the Sunday we focus on you all, please hear me and hear my two-word sermon to you and save. So make it a family matter so that one generation can learn from both your mistakes and your good habits. Teach your children financial concepts and teach them to develop a long-term financial plan and vision for themselves. I'm telling Jaleel right now, as smart as you are, boy, you got to get on the web. You got to get on the web, create you a website, put something on the web that's worthwhile. You love sequel heroes and charge people a dollar to come and see it and let them come from all over the world and see what you, y'all know what he did last week? He's working on his own website. I'm so proud of him. Amen. Teaching them concepts. And I close this morning by simply leaving you with this. Because God does want us to enjoy our lives even 
if we're in a tough financial situation. Amen? Live and enjoy today, but plan for tomorrow. Live for today, regardless of what today brings, but in plan for tomorrow. Whether you are the ultimate beneficiary of what you have for tomorrow or whether it is a part of your legacy that you leave. That is one of the benefits of you being a good and faithful steward. People of God, it's our, with a name like good success, name like good success, we got to walk in that good and godly success and arrest any of those demons and temptations that lure you to secure you to bring about death even in your finances arrest them bring them under the authority of God so that you can enjoy stress free Abundance And abundance for you may be different from your neighbor. We all have different levels of needs, but we've got one principle, and that is whatever God entrusts into your hands, you be faithful over that. Some of you all make six figures here. Some of you all make significantly less than that. It's not the amount that you have. It's are you a good person? and faithful steward. I close with the scripture that you know in Matthew 25. Jesus uses the parable. The persons who were given various amounts to invest. The one that was not a good steward. The one that didn't do anything with what he had. Received a great, great rebuke from Jesus. He says, depart from me. Depart from me. You could have at least taken what I gave you and put it in the bank, even though you wouldn't get very much interest, you'd get something. But you hid the talent that I gave you because you were worried that I was a hard man. Please don't miss that. When God gives you, whether it is a talent of money or a gift, of course, talent meant money, but whatever he gives you, he wants you to multiply. This concludes today's broadcast of Successful Living. And remember, if you meditate on the word day and night, you will make your way prosperous and you will have good success.